interesting. <laughs> I was thinking, who's the, who's the pop star on stage? <laughs> Can you do? Crazy. Amazing. Fantastic. Right, I need to keep my key. And you can all do that with your backgrounds um, just by clicking uh, the links in the Zoom just near the stop button as well. Mm. If you've got oh, enough memory on your computer, mine doesn't. It's so, it's so easy. You could just click it, go to choose virtual background, right? And when you click virtual, it gives you a selection or you can upload your own image. I think I have to upload an image that's of a small memory because my one doesn't do it. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Mel as well, you need to put your name on the, on the Zoom because at the moment your name is coming up as Hey Claire, hey Suzanne, how are you doing? We're just having a goss before we get started. <laughs> right. So can you see my name? Yeah, uh, yeah we can see your name. Yeah, because like, I wouldn't need to see my name, would I? Uh... <laughs> well, sometimes I need to see my name. <laughs> I forget who I am. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes, <sighs> it fins relaxations is the warm up. <laughs> oh, I can do a little warm up for you guys. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> what a gorgeous day it is it is the sea i'm looking out the window and the sea is incredibly blue wow mm. isn't this funny huh unbelievable <laughs> I had my desk by my window, but uh, the light was coming in so strong. All right, I'm going to mute everybody to make sure that uh, we're just going to start the show now. It's half past 12, so let's get going. All right, so welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Finn Witchley of Supersize Media coming to you live and direct from central Edinburgh of the middle of Scotland and uh, in the middle of the pandemic. Yes, we are here on the She Means Business Scotland Roadshow, <laughs> which should have been a roadshow going around Scotland, but because of the fact that we have this uh, crazy pandemic going on, it's now gone online entirely. So basically, this is the She Means Business Experience, which is sponsored by Facebook themselves and enterprise nation so facebook is very interested in making sure that as many women as possible get to start to think about building a business or charity or social enterprise or are even who've already set up a charity social enterprise or business and who need all the kind of tools and techniques to be able to Im grow their business as much as possible so they've asked me, Finn Witchley, to be the big uh, Scotland uh, representative and be their number one trainer to make sure that people are getting all the information that they know about Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp and Messenger, etc., etc. So already I'm a social media trainer anyway. I've been uh, training these kind of things for years and years. But now we're doing a lot more focus on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, but not exclusively for all the different businesses that we're serving. Um, so that's uh, Facebook. And then Enterprise Nation works with Facebook to be able to get all the, the top trainers in the UK together. And Enterprise Nation is an incredible kind of business network 
online. You can look at their website, um, Enterprise Nation, and it's run by this fabulous woman called Emma Jones, who hopefully we'll have on as a guest in the future uh, episodes. And we, it, it's just a, an incredible place where people can find lots of information, go attend lots of events. You know, some of the events that they have is like meet the journalist or meet the buyer or the Amazon Academy and then the She Means Business Program as well. So they organize a whole host of activities. One of the most recent ones that they've got, which is going to be of use for everybody at the moment, is obviously to do with the coronavirus. They've got a coronavirus um, whole page, which has got all the resources and information that you might want. And if you look on the Enterprise Nation website and look for coronavirus support, you'll find all that information there as well. Uh, for some of you who've just been uh, busy looking at everything that we've been doing on the She Means Business Scotland Facebook page, I have been uploading some uh, resources that could be of benefit for, for particularly business in Scotland as well. So I'm going to be putting them all into a big file uh, so that you can access them. Uh, we're going to be talking to Erica later on to find out how difficult it is to get the message out there uh, and to be able to access some of that information. And even if you can access that information, how difficult it is to actually start filling in forms and accessing the resources that they're trying to uh, actually supply. So the other thing that you want to make, maybe look at at the moment is the new pay it forward uh, opportunity, which has again been organized between Enterprise Nation and Crowdfunder. So basically they are offering organizations, any kind of bus British business in the time of crisis, 100% fundraising support uh, in order to be able to uh, ride the tide of this COVID-19 experience. And the idea is that rather than, you know, being able to pay for things right now uh, 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 and receive the services right now, you might be able to pay it forward by, by paying for the, for the service or product right now, and then it gets delivered later. So it's just a way that they've come up with to try and help businesses who are actually super toiling right now and thinking about having to lay off a whole tranche of people from their workforce. So that's Enterprise Nation and Facebook. So uh, when it comes to the She Means Business Scotland, this is our first ever uh, foray into doing this as a live adventure, as I was saying. And we've got a huge host of great uh, talent that we've got lined up for the next couple of months even, because I anticipate that this is gonna be quite a, a long running experience. So we've got huge uh, levels of talent and inspirational role models uh, in, the, in the women community who are in charities, who are in spiritual development, who are in uh, business, who are, in, uh, who are doing incredible things to do with social enterprise and making the world a better place. That's the only criteria that you need to actually be a, a, a guest on this show. Are you making a difference, especially at a time when the world needs people who can get up there and make shit happen. So, and I would, I would categorize all the women who are basically in this group uh, are defined by the ability to make shit happen. <laughs> so uh, welcome to the whole She Means Business Scotland experience and let's make shit happen. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, this is basically going to be going on at 12.30 every Friday. We've got guests happening every single week. And then on the fourth week, we have uh, a training, special training organized by myself. And you can let me know. I'll put up a poll to do, uh, give you a couple of options in terms of what would you really like to get trained on? Is it, is it Facebook? Is it Facebook ads? Is it Facebook engagement? Or is it Instagram stories? Or is it Instagram engagement? Or is it Instagram ads and things like that? So you can let me know what training that we, you, you would really fancy. And we'll have a special training course uh, every month as well. All right. So without further ado, let me introduce the guests that we've got coming on today. So first of all, we have Ms. Mariam Gafara in the house. And she's going to be talking about how to sing yourself happy. 
because if there's a if there's more of a time to be able to find new and innovative ways to make yourself happy it definitely is right now so marianne's going to be talking about her illustrious career as a, as a as an extraordinary person and hopefully she's going to be name dropping some people so we can touch the magic of Mariam through the screens and uh, and hopefully you'll learn how you can access new ways to sing yourself happy during this whole coronavirus experience as well and then we're going to be talking to Miss Erica Oskeland who's going to be here to tell us about her illustrious career as an award-winning journalist uh, working for all the kind of major publications throughout Scotland and Canada and everywhere else and she's going to be helping you to find out how you can make sure you get your message into the media. Uh, because obviously, you know, that, that, that's one, you, you can kind of call the media as a big influencer. You know, you want to make sure your message gets in front of some of the big influencers in the world. And some of them are all, uh, you know, you can look at um, Erica as a, as a kind of gatekeeper to help you to find a way to get your message into those media outlets. And then finally, we're going to be talking to Miss Mel Harris, who is a Tantra superstar. No, that does not mean she has sex for hours and hours and hours, or does it? Well, who knows? Uh, but that's it's obviously the big stereotype about Tantra. The reality about Tantra is it's a very spiritual experience. Uh, it's uh, and the whole kind of sexual aspect of it is only five percent of the the very very deep and intense levels of uh, spiritual and yoga practice that you need to do in order to raise your vibrations and make sure you're having lots and lots of joy. So we're going to hear from Mel in terms of how to make sure we're bringing a lot more joy into this space we call the new Corona era. I guess. All right. So, unless there's any more questions before we get going, I'm now going to introduce you to Miss Maria. Mariam, you want to unmute yourself, and uh, then we can uh, hear all uh, all your great stories. Hi, Mariam, how you doing? Hi, I'm really good, thank you. I'm well and um, really good. Thank you, thank you, Finn, for doing this. No, no, this is really important. I think you know, at times of crisis. We're going to find a lot of people who are, uh, it's going to bring out the worst in some people, but it can also bring out the best in so many people too. Indeed. Indeed. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Why, who are you and what do you do? Let's just start with that one. Okay. Well, I'm the founder and creative director of Got Soul, which is a uh, registered Scottish charity. I just realized my lips are so shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I've, I've made an effort to make sure that I look presentable. You look um, gorgeous. I preferred the shine myself. I loved it. Bring yeah. back the shine. Well, yeah, it was just too distracting. I was too sucked into the image of my own lips. Anyway, forget about that. I'm, I'm as I said, I'm the founder and um, creative director of Got Soul, which is a registered Scottish charity. Uh, with the charitable purpose to bring people out of loneliness and isolation through a, um, an, a community activity, which in our case is soul singing workshops and, um, and through bringing people to, uh, to be part of a vibrant uh, community, supportive, encouraging community and um, make them be part of something um, that gets them out of the house, out of loneliness and isolation. But boy, when I did this eight years ago, I never in my wildest dreams think that I would ever see the day that we would all be globally forced into isolation. So it's the whole thing is now uh, just, you know, gone so much bigger i know but you weren't always a choir master so no. what was about your early days and how did how did you come to the come to the whole singing experience were you were you always musical or did it yeah. come too late in life <laughs> i was i was that kid with the hairbrush in front of the mirror or just going around 
just pretending. I just loved singing. I grew up in a household where everybody enjoyed singing. You know, it was not an odd activity to just burst into song. So, um, you know, um, it, everybody appreciated singing in the household. And um, yeah, I, I would say I, I was always just, I just loved singing. I love singing, you know. Um, and it's uh, something that I've done since I was a little girl. But as you say, I, I've done lots of different things in my life. Yes, uh, tell us about some of the kind of superstars that you've worked with. And you've had a very illustrious career in the music business. Ah, uh, you big me up, baby. I like it when you big me up. Oh, I've, had the, I've had the privilege and the good fortune to have worked with some amazing, amazing, talented uh, people, national and international artists like Misha Paris, Take That, Gareth Malone, um, Felix Buxton from Basement Jacks. You know, lots of, lots of people from different genres of music, different um, areas, but, you know, like Scottish Chamber Orchestra, amazing. I mean, I just feel so blessed and so fortunate to have had the, the, the good fortune and luck to have been touched by these amazing stars, you know. Yeah. And the interesting talent. thing is that you're actually bringing that network into the choir. So the choirs, you know, the everyday people in Dundee and Fife and Glasgow and Edinburgh, where you have your choirs, you know, they're all getting to work with the Take That's and the Misha Powers and yeah. everything. And they're, they're getting to be put on these international stages yes. when they've never been even in their own high school stage. True, very true. Because I, I'm in, at the bottom, at the bottom line of all of this is to be the cause of transformation in people's lives. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning to to, for, for it to have meant something and to cause a transformation and to help people to occur differently for themselves. And when they occur differently for themselves, they will occur differently to others. And that will also ultimately cause a transformation in others as well. So yes, like the image behind me is, is, is that we were on stage with, um, we had the Scottish Chamber Orchestra to play with us and a group of amazing, talented musicians. And that was also um, an event where we invited Misha Paris to sing with us. So mm -hmm. those, these events, um, you know, we all worked towards it for 14 weeks. And then we got together and we performed on a global stage with, a glo with global musicians and artists. So how can that not be transformative? You know? Yeah, exactly. And then you were also a, a judge on a, a TV singing show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was. I, I um, was part of a <clears throat> program on BBC One that ran for two series called All Together Now. Um, Jerry Halliwell was at, and Rob Beckett were the hosts and she was also one of the um, judges. So she was like the, group, the judge captain, the group captain. So uh, yes, that was an interesting and, um, you know, another unique experience. And did you find it was difficult to break into the music industry? I don't know whether, I, I don't know if I've broken into the music, in, I don't know if I am in the music, you know, I don't, I don't occur for myself that way, I just do what I do every day to um, just be a source of joy, you know, and I can be miserable in being that source of joy, but at least I have meaning and purpose. Wow, in, wow. That, that's what, that's what, you know, that's important. That, that, you know, that's what does it for me anyway, you know. Wow. So tell us about, uh, do you ever get these things like imposter syndrome? Because like a lot of women who've achieved a, a good level of success like yourself, you know, they often feel like they've got a lot of doubts. They, they can feel like they've got a lot of pushback. They look at their, their uh, male colleagues who are operating in the same space and, and figure, well, these guys seem to have uh, so many more opportunities just because of the fact that they're blokes. 
And so do you find that there, there's more of an impediment, more barriers as a woman in, the, in your space? Or do you, do you not even focus on, the, on everybody around you? Oh, crikey. Uh, honestly, that imposter syndrome is crippling. It's, a, it, it's something, and I can see from the face, I can see Erica is nodding her head. Honestly, that, you know, I believe in healing through identification and just that nod of your head, Erica, was, it's given me goosebumps because, you know, this is what ends isolation, this connection, you know, whether we're forced to it. I know, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I don't mean to move away, but this is a live example of uh the healing through identifying and being out of isolation just in that nod of that head yes i have battled with um and i do battle with uh, the imposter syndrome but you know um once i learned uh, through personal development that in order to drown out the noise in here of no I can't do this I can't do this is to switch up the volume in the noise out there so that the life is bigger it, I'm committed and held accountable by so many people that I just have to show up and do what I do and look like a fool I look like a fool every day I, I, I'm in the business of looking like a fool every day and it's okay. I, I don't I don't mind. At least, you know, I get up and show up and do and hopefully I make a difference. You yeah. know? And you can see that on the faces of people on your you know, in your Instagram feed and your Facebook, you know, you've got all those images of people looking absolutely ecstatic with their singing and uh, laughing their heads off. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I often say in workshops? Do you know, guys, I'm in the wrong business. I should have been a comedian, you know, um, because for some, I love it. I love it when I say something that is just, just comes, I just be me, right? Do me. And they are laughing. They're looking at me and laughing. I'm like, oh my God, they're finding this hilarious. They're finding me funny. They're finding this hilarious. They enjoy themselves. And you know what? I get a kick out of that. I'm just like, look at these happy faces. Mm. Like for, for two and a half hours, four times a week, I'm like, that's, that's medicinal. Mm. So that's tell me, who was, your, who was your role model when you were growing up? And who would you say is your role model today? Because obviously these things change, or maybe it's the same person that you've always aspired to or just admired. Right. Well, um, you know, I was born in Iran and I, I grew up until the age of 12, which was only about five, six years ago. And oh, yes. um, uh, I grew up in Tehran and, um, you know, uh, during a different time, different political climate, different everything. This was a different country altogether. Um, and I saw a lot of women, you know, I grew up in a household full of women. I'm the youngest of 10 siblings and I had six other sisters and three brothers. So it was a very female dominant environment. Um, my sisters were my role models, you know. Um, I looked up to them, I just, couldn't wait till they left the house so I could put their clothes on and their shoes and go and, you know, uh, dance in front of them. So they were my role models in many ways. And um, I don't know, any, I just somehow really loved any um, woman or man who inspired me. I, I loved it when, and I still to this day do, when someone does or says, something or is in a way that makes the hair on my skin stand you yeah so you just found a new role model in erica basically yes so i have yes i have <laughs> yes i have I, and i was just about to say every woman who is in on this uh show on your show is an inspiration to me wow. because they make me do to say it's okay they're doing it maybe i could do this too all right, it's so a tricky question. I'm gonna put you on the spot. As a musician, obviously you've been surrounded by all different types of music in the world. 
Uh, tell me about your top three pieces of music that you would take with you on a desert island. Oh my goodness. Okay. I, well, <laughs> I would have to take Nisha Paris with me, her music. Absolutely. Um, particularly the album that was the, the soundtrack of my life for a long time, which was so good. Her so good album. Um, so her music would go with me. I would have to take Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie Wonder's uh, album with me. I couldn't choose one track, but if I had to, it's Love's In Need of Love. Um, and the third artist I would take with me, hey, I don't know, maybe, um, I'm thinking, do I wanna take something classical with me? You know, maybe Vivaldi's Four Season, it's the pop of all classical music, you know, just to throw something in the mix, failing that it would either be Mary J. Blige or Angie Stone or, mm, or one of these amazing uh, uh, female artists, Lauren Hill, someone wow, like that. Yeah. Okay, so so what's coming up for you then in the next couple of weeks? How are, how are you going to be, how, how is your organization going to be transformed by this coronavirus? And what are you planning to do over the next couple of weeks and months? Well, our organization, our tiny little charity with big ambitions has been kicked big time by this, obviously. We, I, we run workshops out there in the community, you know, in, in, in Church of Scotland buildings. So that's out, finito. Um, we have moved up, for, for me, I've moved my office into the corner of my lounge. So I'm, I'm working from home. Um, so, and you know, I, I just feel as though, uh, and I bet every other woman on your show today is gonna go, yeah, I think I fly by the seat of my pants every single day. Anyway, in, it, you know, when you're out there doing something, you, you just have to change all the time. So what I am doing, I'm now working from home. So the way I am running my workshops is for our choir members, I run a workshop and video it here in my front room. I've already done that for, for this week's workshops and we send it to them by email um, through our YouTube channel. And then I run um, Zoom groups on the night of the rehearsals for each city because we run choirs in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Dundee, Dunfermline. So on those nights, the family, what we call the soul family, we get together, go through some of the harmonies, bring a cup of tea, have it, you know, I, the whole point of this God Soul is to bring people out of isolation. So we want to have that live, everybody there, doing our thing, having a conversation, maybe singing a little bit, maybe talking about that, whatever, about the day, how they're coping, what they, whatever they want to get off their chest. So that's another thing. I'm also running um, short live stream, uh, live sessions of Make a Fool of Myself on Facebook on Saturdays. Um, tomorrow it will be at 2 p.m. So um, I'm doing that. And also, I just thought up an idea today and I'm going to put it, I'm putting it out there and giving it life and arms and legs to run. Is all the people that I've worked with, artists, you know, this has impacted everybody, obviously. But we can't, musicians who go out gigging in pubs, bars, big venues, whatever. No more. We can't do that. And I know it's important, I know with all the artists that I've worked with, I know how much uh, community means to them. So I'm thinking of running little chats like this with some of the artists that we've worked with in the past so they can come along and boost our community's morale and you know, help them through this difficult time and have something for people to look forward to other than the BBC news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the things we're doing. And I'm also thinking of doing something age specific for those over 70, because my workshops involve a bit of exercise as well, you know. Yeah, there's people who are able to do 10, their 10,000 steps 
just by grooving along to the music when they're uh, in, in the choir rehearsals. That's right. I think the average is about 6,000 steps during right. workshops. So, you know, um, and just think up ways of uh, alleviate, not just concern, anxiety through these times, because um, these are really uncertain times, but also they'll hopefully, hopefully people are well enough to get bored. Yeah. So maybe alleviate a little bit of boredom. It's a luxury. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a luxury. Yes. So that's been incredible, Mario. It's been so good talking to you. So so for everybody who doesn't really know you so well, they want to find out a little bit more about you. Where should they go to uh, find out more information? Well, they just go uh, online and look up Got Soul Choir in Scotland. You just Got Soul Choir. And we've got Facebook, uh, our uh all our obvious social media platforms and our website contact details are there and what is amazing if i may say it really quickly the other night um two nights ago myself and our administrator were in my front room before we all start going separate ways and we did a live thing on live stream on Facebook. So many people like, oh my God, thank you for doing this. Thank you for sending out those videos and all this. And, and people are joining the choir now. They've emailed us to join because they want to be part of this. Wow. I mean, oh my God, that is so humbling. Hey, it's all kicking off, isn't it? That's, that, that's the thing. There's, there's so much... Uh, devastation but there's also so much opportunity for everybody to pull together yes okay on that note thank you so much Ms. mariam thank it's you been wonderful talking to you yes you've got loads and loads of applause from everybody around me as well thank so you. thank you and i'll speak thank to you soon thank you cheers thank you. gorgeous if you just mute your mic as well I certainly will just now all right okay so our next beautiful guest for your delectation today is miss erica erica come on down hello hello how are you i'm good i'm good good good. Yeah. Yeah, good so this is exciting this is the first time that i've ever done anything like this so but you know it kind of feels like the future doesn't it at least for uh, the next little while, while we're all uh, um, social distancing, so. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and as I was saying to everybody, you know, beforehand, we want to be, we want to make this a, an environment where people can feel like they're connected and we can be really, really real. You know, we're not, we're not going to be censored by anybody here, so if anybody's dropping any F-bombs or anything like that, it's totally what is appropriate to make that connection and to get that authentic experience of who you really are and get the real, you know, the shit storm that might be happening as well as, you know, the opportunities that might be happening because, um, you know, we don't want to hide behind uh, our pride when uh, things are going down. But Erica, how's, how's life for you at the moment? You're, you're in boom time right now. Well, you know, uh, there's nothing like a crisis to, uh, you know, get everyone uh, talking and communicating. So uh, that kind of seems to be, uh, you know, where uh, I'm fitting in, which is great. I mean, you know, the thing about uh, journalism, uh, well, there's a few things. One, uh, it, uh, you tend, if you're a journalist, you tend to be a little bit like a junkie you need adrenaline or it's like you don't really function, you're not, you don't feel fully alive until you're in the minute, uh, middle of a panic or a crisis or facing a crazy deadline, you know. Um, it's uh, one of those things and you just get accustomed to that. It's almost like, oh, if you don't feel that, you know, like, are you really uh, alive? You know, uh, B, uh, another thing about journalism is they are quite sweary. So, you know, <laughs> thankfully, uh, Finn has given me permission to, you know, drop the occasional H bomb. So, but that is F bomb, but that's me. Uh, that's the authentic me. And that's just kind of the training and the sort of culture that uh, I've developed my career in. So tell me about your background. How did you get into journalism and how did you get to become an award-winning journalist as well? Uh, well, funnily enough, uh, well, you know, uh, like uh, some of the best things, I suppose, um, I fell into journalism uh, because at the, uh, when I first did, and it was like luck and, uh, you know, some surprising uh, people and then just uh, something, well, clearly, uh, you know, like it was something that I felt 
uh, I could do and I was good at. So, I mean, lo always loved writing. Was never like, you know, I didn't write a lot of like stories uh, about, uh, you know, fiction. I, there was a bit of that, but I wasn't doing it all the time. But, you know, I was clearly uh, one of the things that, you know, in, during school I was good at was writing. And then I got to university and I was doing English literature, studying that. And I think the reason why I loved English literature is because basically uh, you, it gives you a license to talk about sex and death, which strikes me as being some of the most important subjects. Um, and then uh, I started just kind of hanging around and volunteering with the uh, local uh, or the university radio station, which is where all the cool kids were. And um, so I want to go back to imposter syndrome. But at the time, you know, I kind of thought, oh, well, I want to be with the cool kids. I want to be a cool kid. So I started doing that. And then I started writing uh reviews and doing interviews with bands which was great a because you got to meet some of your favorite bands and then b you got paid in uh free cds you remember those like before streaming uh yeah. but yeah you actually had to kind of like have something uh on which you listen to music uh and it was great free gigs and stuff like that and then uh you know all of a sudden uh, i found myself uh just as i was about to graduate the magazine uh, that had been associated with the university radio station then went weekly. And uh, as a result of that, uh, just as I graduated, I had a full-time job as the arts editor of this new uh, arts and entertainment weekly in Calgary. I mean, you know, how lucky is that? And so, I mean, you know, I think to a certain extent, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you, luckier you are, but that really was a good break. And, uh, you know, the editor, uh, you know, was, you know, like many editors, uh, you know, kind of impossible to deal with, probably had, you know, like a few, um, uh, you know, kind of social issues, but nevertheless, you know, we got on fine and uh, it was all good. And so, yeah, that was a great start. And then I found myself uh, being uh, in a position to move to the UK. And so a lot of people ask me, well, you know, what brought you to the UK? Why would you leave Canada? Because like Canada's pretty cool and like I don't miss it at all and I love it whenever I go back. And, and then I say, well, it's because uh, of love. And uh, uh, many people, I think, when you find that they've made the transatlantic move, uh, there's usually, you know, kind of like some shagging going on there in the background, you know, which to have inspired that. Uh, and sure enough, it was. Uh, however, uh, you know, I've since moved on to version 2.0. So, like, that's not quite the first husband, but it's like, you know, the best one, obviously. You can wave and say hi, honey. <laughs> We're both working from home today, obviously. Um, but yeah, and so that's kind of how it started. And then I, I started then in terms of, uh, you know, actual B2B corporate journalism, really kind of like uh, at the ground level. Um, so I started working for uh, corporate uh, and publications, trade publications, you know, some of them dodgier than the others. Uh, then uh, it was great, you know, again, but I found, uh, you know, my luck, uh, you know, was good uh, and it was usually the supportive people. So I had been working for a publication and uh, I'm sure, you know, like, uh, even though they said they printed 6,000 co 6, copies. They did print 6,000 copies, but sometimes they didn't send those 6,000 copies out to where they said they were. I know, it's like, Ugh. But <laughs> guy who uh, ran the company, publishing you know, director of that company, uh, he was about as tall as I am, and I'm not very tall. I'm like five foot two. So he's as tall as I am. Uh, you know, huge personality, you know, uh, very contrarian and often in his views and, uh, you know, didn't mind at all uh, telling you exactly what he thought. Um, so I'd left his employee and I'd gone to work for uh, a PR agency. But he then was talking to another editor of a rival magazine at a dinner that they were having. Uh, and apparently he was being quizzed about me uh, because I was hired by this rival magazine a few months later. And it was lovely. And like, this is still kind of probably one of the best things that anyone's ever said to me. Uh, he uh, rang me up uh, when I had started at the new rival uh, business magazine. And he said, well, if I'd known uh, they were going to ask you uh, if they were asking me about you because they were going to offer you a job, I would have said you were a cretin. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, and brilliant. Like, that's the kindest thing you've ever said to me, Martin. Like, <laughs> it was really good. Wow. 
Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of where I started. And then, uh, you know, that kind of gave me the grounding. In fact, that's where I met Emma Jones. So Emma Jones is a mutual uh, friend of myself and Finn. And uh, at the time, she was this uh, absolute whirlwind. And she'd been setting up these businesses, you know, that were really just kind of hitting niches that you just didn't know exist until she was so brilliant at, uh, you know, articulating it. And so at the time, we kind of uh, fell in with this kind of crowd of uh, you know, people who were interested in supporting and developing businesses. And so that's what she still does now, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, that's always been good. So I've always really loved her. And it's been great to kind of catch up with her over the past couple of years. Because, you know, I mean, over 20 years or so, uh, you know, relationships matter, uh, I think. Then uh, I found myself uh, after being in Manchester uh, for a number of years, which I loved. Uh, Manchester at the time uh, was just going through that transition. So when I got there, it was still a bomb site. So I remember the bombings in 1996. Uh, and in retrospect, it started to be increasingly uh, apparent that it was probably the, you know, if, if Carlsberg did bombs, like, you know, this would have been the best bomb ever because it didn't kill anyone. And then, uh, you know, someone once described it to me as uh, being the most significant flow of investment and funding, you know, from south to north in the history of Britain, uh, just because of all the insurance to replace, you know, all the uh, buildings that had gone aside. And at the time, uh, there was a, a, a leader, chief executive of the city council, Howard Bernstein, now known as Sir Howard Bernstein, uh, and his uh, leader, uh, who is a labor leader, uh, Richard Lees. And together they just like managed to smash heads together. So by the time that I left, they'd had, uh, you know, this amazing, uh, it, they'd had the Commonwealth Games and they changed, you know, kind of some of the landscape of post-industrial uh, Manchester in such a way that, you know, has been amazing. And so whenever I go back, I love Manchester. It's always great. But uh, the opportunity came to move to Edinburgh and uh, that was great. So I started doing a very similar job there uh, to what I was doing. And again, luck intervened in that I got a job for a, a contract publisher, which is fine. You know, you get to write, you know, kind of corporate reports and stuff like that. So that kind of seemed very, you know, kind of dull but worthy. But uh, my, uh, there was a guy who was the editor of uh, Scottish Business Insider magazine which is very similar to the magazines that I uh, had been working with in Manchester. And in fact, uh, you know, had been founded by the same people. So they were exactly the same approach and I knew exactly what it was. So I'd met uh, Alistair as well before because he'd lived in Manchester briefly uh, when I was there. But he, he, he post, posted something up and I dropped him a line and I said, hey, guess what? I'm in Edinburgh now. Maybe we should catch up. And he got back to me immediately. He said, well, let's go have lunch tomorrow. And I'm like, great. So we went and had lunch. And by the end of the day, he'd offer me a job as a deputy editor of Scottish Business Insider magazine, which was fantastic. And so that was the best way for me to really kind of like get a foothold and build a profile in uh, Scotland and in that business community. I mean, we had these crazy events. You know, I'm sure I, I think I've still got the pictures and stuff like that where we went on big, you know, kind of like shooting uh, and drinking, you know, kind of like sessions with uh um, you know, the chief executive of the Royal Bank of Scotland and <laughs> a guy who had ended up being pilloried, but we were getting big awards for such a genius and all that sort of stuff. I was like, oh, in retrospect, oh, I don't know, it was quite so good. However, uh, then, uh, so that was another lucky thing. And then uh, one day I got approached uh, by the Scotsman uh, to see if they, uh, you know, if I might, you know, consider joining them. And I said, yes, absolutely. So, uh, and that kind of brought me from, you know, the kind of corporate, you know, side, uh, then into kind of more frontline journalism, because just as I joined, uh, pretty much within weeks, uh, RBS uh, then uh, issued uh, the most significant cash call uh, in the history uh, of corporate UK. And they were trying to get, uh, they put their head around, they needed 12 billion. And then after that, everything would be fine. But of course they were completely wrong, which of course like ushered in a new era of business journalism, which made, you know, kind of where everyone in the pub then started talking about, well, what is a CDO squared and what is subprime? And, you know, and then it brought a whole 
new level of kind of conversation and dialogue, you know, to the general population, which meant that instead of, you know, being just on the boring back pages of the business section, uh, it was kind of front page news. So, you know, that was really useful, uh, really interesting times. Uh, you know, there was, uh, although I ended up kind of feeling, oh, like Edinburgh is just so gloomy and depressed because, well, you know, what Scots are like, you know, they can really kind of do gloom, you know, really well, you know, when needs be. <laughs> so, <You're doer. laughs> oh, well, see, you know, I mean, like, you know, they, I think it's a coping mechanism, you know, <laughs> but. Mm. And then uh, opportunity knocked again. So uh, one of the uh, people, you meet people all the time and, um, you know, one of the most privileged things, uh, particularly being a business journalist, is uh, your kind of ability to, you know, going to meet and interact uh, with all people. It's kind of a leveler in a way. I mean, you know, I grew up, you know, raised by, you know, kind of a single mom and my sister, my assistant mom, you know, and, uh, you know, we really didn't have a lot, but A, you know, kind of because of my accent, no one really knows what kind of like schooling I had or, you know, uh, but then, you know, and then I'm just kind of like that, uh, you know, person that just asks questions and, you know, takes notes and calls you back because I've made a note of your uh, mobile phone number and, uh, you know, that's fine. But it does give you uh, an immense, uh, you know, 360 view of, you know, who's working in communication, who's working in industries, you know, who are, who are the people that, you know, can speak about that, who can tell you about what you need to know. Um, and... So that, uh, you know, was useful. Uh, so one of those people that I'd met uh, was a, a guy named Ellis Watson. And at the time when I first met him, he was the uh, managing director of Trinity Mirror, which is the owner of Scottish Business, or which had been the owner of Scottish Business Insider. And uh, uh, so he had an interesting time because um, he uh, ended up having to sack a guy named Piers Morgan, who was the editor of the Mirror because he put up, you know, like pictures that turned out to be fake. But of course, they were really good pals. Uh, and they, st they remained good pals, despite, you know, having to sack him. So, you know, and so a few years later, uh, you know, um, Ellis, you know, found himself uh, actually out uh, in Cincinnati working for the bus company First Group. Uh, where upon he met up with his old friend Piers, who then uh, introduced him to uh, his friend Simon Cowell. So Ellis then went to go work for Simon Cowell's company, Psycho, which for about nine months, but then he ended up coming back and then he phoned me one day and he said, look, I know you're in Edinburgh and this is in Aberdeen, but why don't you come up, be the uh, deputy business editor of the p and I know it'll be great. And, you know, he's just that sort of person. I mean, I you know I just kind of thought, oh, well, you know, I'll run it by the husband first, obviously. <laughs> Uh, and then we ended up uh, moving up to Aberdeen. Wow. So that was about seven years ago. And I don't know, see, this is maybe how I've been talking about good luck. I don't know if there's bad luck. So, you know, like when I was at the Scotsman, mm -hmm. and then immediately uh, there was like a banking crisis. Uh, I moved up to Aberdeen, uh, became the deputy business editor, and then subsequently the business editor of the Press and Journal, uh, upon which there was almost immediately an oil price crash, wow. which of course, again, you know, kind of made for interesting times. So, uh, you know, that was all, you know, really good fun. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of running out of time here. Oh, Let me just uh, bash on with some of the questions, like... Uh, so what do you recommend that people should do if they want to get their message into the media then? For all the small businesses, particularly at the moment during the coronavirus, what, what, what are your top tips for uh, getting your message out there? Okay, well, you know, feel free to, you know, be careful about this, but, you know, there could be, you know, kind of, uh, you know, you can hijack the top news story, you know, which is coronavirus. If you have like a good coronavirus story, you know, you can get yourself, you know, into the paper. But, you know, there's, there is the one thing that you have to caveat when you're looking at, you know, kind of getting yourself into the paper. The best store, the best way to do that is to, uh, you know, take lots of cocaine and wrap your Ferrari around a lamppost. You know, that's going to be the best way to get yourself into the paper. But clearly, you know, most people probably don't want that way. So, you know, my, my approach to this is like, you know, you have to tell something that is, uh, you know, newsworthy and useful to the audience uh, of whichever journalist it is you're approaching. So it's really helpful to know, 
who is that audience actually? Uh, and like, what does that journalist write about? Like, you know, if that journalist, you know, kind of writes about health and you're writing about uh, IT, you know, they might, you know, probably, they probably won't get it and they probably won't even, you know, return to you. So even just like having a... Find the right people. Yeah, and right, yeah. Yeah. the other question is, you know, how, how, what is a newsworthy story? You know, uh, your Ferrari ran a lap close to some <laughs> But for most business owners, it's really tricky for them to find out, you know, what is a newsworthy story. If they've got a new event coming up, that's not really going to be newsworthy for the journalist. You know, how do you make those things more sexy? Sex yeah. up their uh, their that's story. It. Well, you know, I mean, like you kind of, you know, uh, some, you know, it's it is a moving feast because sometimes, uh, you know, kind of like what goes on one day, you know, won't go in another. So, you know, just to be able to kind of like, uh, you know. Uh, say, you know, well, that will be, you know, like a good news story is fine. But, you know, I was talking to, uh, you know, this guy and he said, oh, well, this company said that they were giving away something for free because of coronavirus. We're doing that. And you said that that wasn't a story. And I'm like, well, you know, the reason why is because A, it's going to look like it's me too. B, it kind of looks like actually, you know, what you're doing is, you know, doing this to promote yourself. And it seems very naked you know, that approach, you know, so you might say you're trying to be helpful, but actually just kind of looks like you're trying to flog your, your stuff. Yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, something to kind of like have to be careful of, you know, cause it has to be of genuine value. So like the difference between the two, I told them, you know, the guy, you know, the first one, I said, well, you know what, like this had, you know, the backing of like a, uh, you know, like a Scottish, uh, you know, institution, you know, which kind of suggested that this, you know, kind of, uh, extended you know what this institution provided in terms of a service to people so you know like it had the kind of banking so you, sometimes you have to think a little bit more laterally about you know what you're doing to get into the news but you know kind of like honestly you know what really helps a really good picture uh you know something you know you know what news is is something that you haven't heard before yeah. so you know that's you know that makes it news it's new you know and so, you know, uh, when it comes to business to business communications, they, you know, got a five uh, key news things are, uh, you know, new investment or M&A, uh, job creation or job deletion, uh, awards, still sometimes that they get to do it. Uh, and uh, then, oh, the word of the other ones. <laughs> Sorry, I should have made a list, shouldn't I? Sorry, you can stick them down in the Facebook group. Little helps like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm are essential we're gonna have to wrap up here because we i can't believe we're already running out of time here we've only got last 10 minutes to talk to mel so if anybody's wanting to uh, catch up with you obviously they can drop any information into the facebook group if they've got yeah. any problems with the, their pr obviously we can all jump in there's a whole bunch of marketers and pr people and specialists uh, but no, nobody ever as as brilliant as our erica here so but she'll she'll be happy to jump in and answer anybody's questions if they want to as well so on okay. that note, thank you, Erica, so much. It's been amazing to talk to you. I very thank much you appreciate much. it. And I'm sorry to cut it short, but we've only no, got... No, no, time, time carries on. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Thank you very much, Erica. Miss Mel, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> thank you for your patience. I mean, I can't believe we've been uh, we've been going for so long. We've only got the last 10 minutes left for you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's so okay. introduce yourself. Tell us about who you are and what do you do and why should anybody give a damn? Well, no one should actually really give a damn, if I'm honest. <laughs> they should all be enjoying their lives. But... <laughs> But um, yeah, basically, um, as you said, I, I teach Tantra now, which is uh, a very interesting topic because for most people, it, uh, the first comment is, oh my God, is it that crazy thing that Sting did? Or is it some erotic kinky sex? And then everyone's actually a bit curious and they want to know more, but they're also a little bit terrified of it. So it's an interesting topic. So we have all the sex and death and juiciness that we were talking about earlier <laughs> for the news. Um, but also we have a lot of fear around it, you know, people wanting to approach it and understand it, which is a little bit of a shame because it has so much to offer and it's so transformational. Indeed. Uh, I, as a big fan of myself, I have to confess myself to be a big addict of Miss Mel and her way of life as well. She said getting into the cross-legged position. And so, <laughs> but your business has been massively affected by the coronavirus because what you do is a lot of yoga, a lot of massage, 
a lot of classes, a lot of teaching. So how are you, how are you doing? How are you managing the transition? Well, it's been really interesting because I was, um, as all this kind of started hitting the fan, so to speak, um, I was actually over in Belgium teaching our beginner, beginning Tantra yoga uh, sort of story, which teaches people about what yoga is really about and the work of energy and how to harness it and how to support yourself. So as I landed in Belgium, everything was kind of fine. And then it was like they were shutting down all the businesses and we had a chat with the group and should we carry on? And like, Mel, we really want to carry on because we feel this will really support us. So we did, we did the four days and then literally on the last day, they were saying the last plane's out. And I was on the last bus that day, the last train that day and the last plane felt like Indiana Jones sweeping in and sweeping out for four days. So literally landing back to the UK going, right, we're gonna to have to postpone all of our courses because it's all touch. You know, when we're teaching the Tantra massage, it's all touch. Um, and yoga, we're working, and if people have got colds, and it's going to be a really easy environment to pass things on with coughing and sniffing. So yeah, and obviously giving massages is a healing aspect because we give Ayurvedic massage and Tantra massage for healing um, and for well-being. Well, we we can't really do that either at the moment because we can't guarantee a safe environment and passing it on. I have clients of very different age ranges. Um, from people in their 70s to, to, to um, people in their um, late teens. So it's a, again, we just need to be a bit careful. So not getting caught in the mass hysteria or anything, but also just being careful of people's safety, not so much that young people or people that are uh, the average um, person is going to be ill, um, but who are they passing it on to and their loved ones and, and their dear ones. I know it's kind of made me think I was meant to be down this weekend with my lovely mother for Mothering Sunday and having just arrived off planes and trains and automobiles traveling across an infected Europe, um, I decided it was better not to visit and allow her to stay safe. So yeah, it's impacted us in a big way. And how, how are you feeling, by the way? Because you were mentioning this morning, you're feeling a bit <laughs> groggy and snuffly. You might, you might even have, have the virus after having been uh, on your trains and planes and automobiles. I'm, I may indeed. My lovely partner is a doctor. And, um, and as I was heading off in Belgium, he'd actually got a couple of um, masks uh, the, for me for, to travel with. And he'd actually ordered them and everything. And then I remember getting on the bus before I was flying off. And he's like, you got your mask? I was like, no, I've <laughs> left it at home. So, uh, so yeah, so he was like, oh, that's really good. So yes, I've arrived home with snuffles. Do you know what, at the end of the day, um, you, you know, with, if I can gain natural immunity from it, that's fine. If I do the right things to make sure everyone else is protected, that's fine. But in the same breath, I'm using all of my techniques that everything that we do in Tantra is about um, everything to be doing Tantra is about harnessing the energy within your being. You're an energetic being. You're not just a physical being. You're not just a mind. You're this powerful energetic being. And everything around us is energy. We know this. You know, I grew up as a scientist. I did science as, a, as my degree. And everything around us is energy. So in Tantra, you're learning techniques where you can harness energy. So you can pull energy. And people have heard about pranic healing and pranayama from yoga. This is about how you pull energy in from the universe around you to boost and vitalize your own energy. So the actual Hatha yoga does the same. It detoxifies the body and boosts the body. And, you know, and if you're going to follow the, the traditional line of Tantra, then, you know, it's increasing your wonderful sexual energy. So <laughs> waves of orgasm. Orgasm is the most healing thing a, a human being can experience, especially a woman. So, you know, um, in Tantra, yes, 5% of the teachings are about sexuality. So, you know, you can utilize this orgasmic energy as well. But yes, it's using all the tools, the meditation techniques and everything. And the big thing for us is just supporting our community because we have an international community. So literally we've come home. I must have been intuitive or something, but I'd suddenly ordered camera kit and lighting and everything <laughs> before I headed off. Um, so we've set everything up here and um, we'll start to do um, live sessions and group talks, um, group meditations. Um, we'll be inviting, we'll be doing free Hatha Yoga sessions and meditations just for people generally if they're curious to find out about tantra a bit more and to support them because we know it's very powerful very healing very calming um i have to say that the practice that that i have that it gives me is it's not a negative outlook i mean the first thing i thought when i was like we might be locked in for um for a few months was wow it's a chance to relax to be creative <laughs> to catch up on a few things rather than going into panic mode or panic zone or 
or all these things where we tend to get hyped up by the media. Sorry, Erica, I don't mean anything bad by that, but where we tend to get hyped up a lot by the media and then we hype each other up. And <laughs> so, so yeah, so I think. Tell us about the massage where you're actually not touching the body. How does that actually work? Uh -huh. Well, so again, as I was talking earlier, we're not really just a physical being or the being of a mind. Um, we are much more than that. And we actually emanate energy out from our being. We actually emanate different kinds of energies out from our being. So there's a vital energy called prana. Then there's another, you know, emotionally we emit an energy field out. Mentally we emit an energy force out. And if you know, as a, as a normal human being, um, especially as ladies, we tend to have the ability um, to walk into a room and be very discerning very, very quickly about what's going on in a room. So, you know, especially if it's a dinner party or something, you might go, those two are not talking to each other. There's something going on over there. Or look at those two, something's about to go on and happen there. And the guy's looking at you going, how on earth did you pick any of that up and women have this natural ability to be quite intuitive and quite discerning well actually you're using your energetic field that's the emotional field to pick up and sense the emotional energy of other people and you're just doing it intuitively we'll say body language because you're reading the body language that's natural but it's actually the resonance of the human being that you're tuning into and women have this capacity to be much more receptive in their energetic fields and understand them so when we're working in the massage, we do um, an Ayurvedic practice, which is a body massage that opens up the energy channels. You have 72,000 energy channels in your body and various marma points. So a bit like Chinese uh, medicine with meridians and acupuncture that everyone's heard of. So we do the physical massage, we open up the energy channels. And once the energy in the body starts to activate, it's like you're tickling it and getting it to lift and rise then you can start to activate the energy in these other energetic fields and you can work with them. So quite often you'll see videos on the, on the website and stuff where I have my hands well above the person's body, maybe a meter even sometimes, and I'm working in different planes in the emotional planes and the mental planes. And the whole body is lifting and waving and vibrating um, and, and basically feeling a beautiful orgasmic state as we start to create very, very deep, profound healing that shifts traumas, blockages, negative thoughts, um, ne negative experiences out of your emotional and mental bodies and therefore also out of the physical body because the physical body um, is the symptom, where the symptoms are seen of the negative energy that we carry. So all this stress that's being created right now is not gonna help with the flu virus or the flu symptoms or corona, because the more stressed we get, the more the immune system suffers and the more it's then shown in the physical body with having the virus or the cold. Incredible, Mel, I wish we could talk much more about this. I know you've got so much more to say. I'll have to get you to come back on to uh, recompense the fact that your interview was cut short. But to uh, just wrap up here, can you just let us know where we can find out more information if somebody's curious about knowing more about Tantra and uh, how they can get in contact with you, apart from through the She Means Business Scotland Facebook group? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, alchemyofliving.co.uk, that's the website, and also Alchemy of Living on Facebook, you can find us there. I'll put some details underneath here after the interviews if people want to find us. And please come and join us. Please come and experience some of the meditations, come and experience some of the yoga. And, you know, we'll do a special offer as well for folk um, that if people are interested in experiencing a massage or experiencing um, one of the courses, then they can book. And when the dates come, um, they'll get a 15% discount if they want to book now. And when the dates come, they can just choose dates that they want to in the future. It's not a big deal. We'll be back in business. <laughs> oh, there's, uh, there's Erica. What? Ah, oh, <laughs> thank you, Erica. <laughs> website. Fantastic. This is brand new as well. Yeah, it is brand new. Note, it's half past one, so we need to uh, keep it keep it tight, keep it real. So I'm going to have to thank everybody. My guests did this afternoon have been Miss Gorgeous, uh, Mariam Kafari of Got Soul Choir. And uh, we had Erica Askeland of Mediacraft. And we've had Mel Harris of Alchemy of Living. Thank you so much for joining us today. Next week, we have Mel Sherwood, who's going to be helping us to learn how to speak in public with a lot more confidence. We've got Sharon Ritchie, who's going to be talking about networking skills for the terrified. And then we've also got Miss Finn Goddard, another famous Finn in the uh, Scottish uh, hemisphere, who's going to be talking about how to find greater harmony 
again using access to spiritual tools all right so on that note thank you so much for joining us and i'll see you next week for the next episode of she means business scotland Woo! cheers everybody